Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Mike, and today I'm gonna do a follow-up to my Landroid video that I posted a couple months ago. Just uh, to uh, talk about a little bit about what it can do and a couple of the issues I had. First things first, I love the Landroid. It's just saved me hours and hours this summer where I could do other stuff instead of mowing the grass. Some of the other positive effects I've had on the Landroid is my yard is it's the best it's looked and I haven't had to put any fertilizer on it. Um, you know, as it as the grass gets cut or the little small clippings go back into the grass and provides its own nutrition. So that's awesome. I don't know if it's just coincidence or not, but I used to have moles in the yard, but now that I run Landroid every day, every other day, I don't have any moles anymore. So from what I've read online is the actual vibrations of Landroid going has, or it scares the moles away, makes them move on to the next yard or wherever they go, I don't know. but. That's been a pretty uh, pretty pleasant surprise right there. So without further ado, let me show you what my Landroid can do. So first things first is this is the ramp I use to let Android out. Um, the actual drop off from the cement to the ground is about an inch and a half. So I used a pallet and I built a little bit more gradual of a decline. And if you look, hopefully you can see that, it's about an inch. An inch from the board to the ground. And I just kind of want to show you guys that Landroid can handle it like a champ. Okay, so going down, you saw it had no issues. And so now I'm going to show you going up. That is about an inch drop, and as you can see, it can do it no problem. And here it comes again. And there you go. So it hit the wires, it was coming down, and that's why it made its little uh, hesitation right there. All right, what happens if Landroid hits you or bumps into a kid or a dog? Uh, that was a question I had on one of my other video. So I am going to show you what Landroid actually does when it runs into somebody. All right, so as you can tell, when Landroid hits something or an immovable object, or a dog, it'll back up and it'll change directions. And I will show you again, just uh, just so you can see. Okay, the next test I wanna show you guys is if you have dogs, all right? So there's a, a some dog poop I didn't pick up yet. Uh, and it's from you know medium-sized dog, but I want to show you that just in case you miss something or miss some dog poop, Landry can still run over it, and it's not going to mess it up. You know, it might not even hit it. For this test, I have the Landroid set on two, which means it's cutting about two inches of grass. So let's see if it mows right over it with no issues, or if it hits it and messes the blade up. Oh, so it cut it up. It cut it in half. All right, this next test is gonna be having the Landroid run over a tennis ball to see if it chops it up or if it passes smoothly over it. Okay, so the tennis ball got caught under the Landroid. All right, so it looks like it broke the tennis ball. When I first got the Landroid, it actually cut a tennis ball in half, or actually into like thirds. So I know that it will cut a tennis ball, but I just want to show you guys that something the size of a tennis ball, it will get stuck underneath the Landroid. So make sure you pick up your yard before you before Landroid starts mowing. Okay, for this demonstration, I'm just going to show you what happens when Landroid hits a boundary wire. So I also have the boundary wire going around the whole yard. But then I ran it out 
and did a boundary wire around this tree that I already had planted. So this is what happens when Landroid hits the boundary wire. All right, as you can see, it hits the boundary wire and then it switches directions and that's how it mows back and forth. Every time it hits the boundary wire, it just switches direction and it goes another way. Works also has an active collision system that'll sit on top of your Landroid. I believe it sits right here and those like little, it's a little silver piece. Let me go right here. I believe the ACS sits right here. I obviously don't have it, but it's a little radar detector, sonar detector, whatever they use for it. And as it comes up to objects, it'll actually recognize them and it'll move around it. Like I said, I don't have that. So I'm going to show you what happens or what I did to get around spending 250 bucks on the ACS when I planted a new tree. This is a new wild tree we found this summer after I installed the boundary wire. So I didn't want to have to break the wire and re-splice it in to bring a boundary wire to run around the tree. So what I did is I used some wood, just pallet wood, and I built a barrier around the tree. And so, just like when you get hit, or when Landroid runs into you, I'm gonna show you what it does when it hits an immovable object. So that was my solution instead of spending $250 on the ACS. ACS stands for anti-collision system. Just wanted to get that right. And like I said, it's about $250. So how does Landroid go home? So in case you're wondering, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what Landroid does when you send it home or when the battery is depleted to 9%. All right, so it links up with the boundary wire and then just follows it home. So one thing I've noticed is if Landroid hits the boundary wire that you have running around trees, it'll circle it one complete time, trying to look for the wire, trying to follow it. And then once it makes a complete circle, it'll actually leave the inner boundary wire, the inner boundary circle, and go back over and find the perimeter. So I've been pretty lucky. I've only had a couple issues this year since I've had it. And this is one of them. If the grass is wet, this is more than a 90 degree turn and now that I know what I know now, I would probably make it not as sharp, but this is one of the places where it got stuck once the ground was wet. But as you can see right there, it made that turn with no issues. So this is another issue I've seen a couple times this year if the ground's wet, trying to get up my little ramp. But as you just saw there, it did it like a champ again. And then it follows the wire home. And then it starts to charge itself. All right, so as it's coming in, if you see, this is where it charges itself. These little metal posts on the Landroid, it'll follow the wire in. And then the way it runs in the base is it should have a perfect alignment every single time. And then if the green light's on and it's pulsing, it's charging. But I think my Landroid did 100%, so the green light's not pulsing right now. All right, one of the questions I had was, has a bagger for the grass clippings or they, they blow out the side? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the Landroid. Uh, I guess I'll go over the, the parts real quick or the basics. I'm no expert by any means. I just basically set the wire up and went, so I haven't really fiddled with it a whole lot. But here goes. So this is the adjustable depth of the cutting. So I have it on two. I think it goes all the way down to 1.6 inches is what one is. Two is about 
2.1 inches if I'm not mistaken. I had it on one for a while, but the grass got too thick this summer and it would bog down. Obviously here's a control pad. Um, I usually start and stop it from my phone. There's, uh, Works has an app that goes with it. Um, if you lift it or if it gets stuck, you have to do a manual reset and that's pretty easy. You know, start and then okay starts it. Uh, if you want to turn it off, you know, pretty easy. Emergency stop. Um, you know, if you see it's going to hit somebody or a dog or it's going to run over a pile of dog poop, which is usually what I see, I'll hit the stop real quick, pick it up, and then do the start okay to get it going again. Here's the battery part. Uses the same works battery as every other works tool, which is nice. The charging terminals and those line up like i said to the base to these all right so as you look at the front of it you can see these little ridges this is actually where the blade is all right and as i flip it up you will see so now i got the alarm saying it's been lifted this is what the bottom looks like here's the cutting blade these normally spin free, however, sometimes you get gunk built up under them and then they get stuck. You just clean that gunk out and it gets the rotations back. If you cut you know, wet grass, if it's dewy, uh, if it's after it rained, it'll really gunk up. And sometimes what I do is I just make sure they're out, the blades are stuck out, and then I just go with it. I don't really sweat it too much. But these are the same blades I've had since June. I never switched them out this year. And I ran it pretty much every day or every other day. And then when it was raining, you know, there was a week where I didn't run it at all. Um, but that's about it. You know, these are the, the wheels that drive it. I see some people put nails or screws in it to give it more traction. I haven't had to do it. These are just normal, normal wheels. Uh, here's a blade guard. So I guess one last part is uh, when I bought my Landroid, Works was having a sale or a special where they gave you this garage to protect your Landroid. It's kind of neat, but I don't think I would pay $150 for it. But since I got it for free, I use it obviously. So this year I've only had maybe two or three issues with the Landroid. The last three months i feel lucky because people in the facebook group have had a lot more issues than me but one of the issues i had was landroid hit this perfectly where it basically got high centered right here one of the wheels got stuck on it and then i had to come and just basically lift it off and do a manual reset so the second the second issue i had is i cut the wire i cut the wire not landroid i was trying to mow because i didn't want to weed eat and basically I mowed too close to the ground, the wire got caught and got cut. But you can see this blue thing. This is one of the, the little splicers that comes with your Landroid. I got three of them, but I found them pretty cheap on Amazon. I got 20 more for I think $25. But after that one splice, I've had no issues. But other than that, I feel pretty fortunate. Um, really not a whole lot of issues I've had. So as I said in my last video, I highly recommend getting the Landroid if you're thinking about it. It's over the three months I've had it. I bought it June 16th and now it's October. So June, July, August. Over the three plus months I've had it, I've only had to cut the grass. Um, never, because I send it out every day and it cuts a little bit at a time. And um, the only thing I've had to do is weed eat because I didn't do the measurements to get it exactly four inches away from the, the fence. I just wanted to get it in when I first got it and let it start going and then I figure I could weed eat uh, the little six inches or seven inches or whatever of the grass that needed to be cut. If you like this video, go ahead, like and subscribe. If you have any questions, ask them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. You know, if I get enough enough questions, maybe I do another video. If um, you know, hey, can the Landroid do this? Can it do that? Can it cut six inch grass? Whatever you have, just you know, shoot me a question and I'll try to answer the best I can. I'm not a uh, very technical user of it because I got it and basically plug and play. 
I installed the wire and I let it go and I haven't really touched it since, which is awesome. So thanks for watching and I hope I gave you some, some information that you can use or if you're on the fence, I hope you go ahead and take the plunge and have a great day.